Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about Planet Nine and specifically answering a question one of you wonderful people asked earlier, which was, why is it that we don't actually use uh, same techniques that we use to find exoplanets to try to discover Planet Nine? Anyway, let's discover in this video and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So we're actually going to escape this simulation and basically take a look at the Earth simulation first. Uh, not Earth, but solar system simulation, because I want to explain to you how we usually detect um, exoplanets. So when we're looking at other stars, there's two major ways um, that exoplanets can be found. One of those ways is if a planet passes right in front of the star, and for a blink of a second, we actually get to experience the... right there. We get to experience the uh, drop in luminosity of the star, and it happens periodically, so we know that there's got to be something orbiting around it. Now, for obvious reasons, we can't really use this technique to find Planet 9, because Planet 9 is really far away, and it's not going to be in front of the Sun. It might come in front of the other stars at some point, but we need to know where to look for us to find it. So that technique is out of the question. And this is actually called Direct Observation Technique. Now, the other technique is a little bit more tricky, a lot more ingenious, and involves a lot more mathematical calculations and physics. This technique is based on the idea that everything that orbits around something doesn't actually orbit that particular object, but creates what's known as a barycenter. The best example of that is if I take Sun and Jupiter, if I actually just sum them up here, and create a barycenter between these two objects. So let's actually just look at this, create barycenter, and if I zoom into the sun right now, you'll see that right there, it's actually supposed to be inside the sun, slightly inside the sun, but right there, there is the very center between the sun and the Jupiter. Now, this is what you would call a, um, basically the orbit that they create for each other to orbit. Because Jupiter is so massive and because sun is a lot more, more massive, they actually orbit around one another in a way that you might see right here if I accelerate time. So you'll notice that the Sun is actually orbiting around this point, and so does Jupiter. And um, everything in our solar system actually creates this barycenter. And obviously the Sun moves around because of Jupiter, and you can easily detect this from Earth by using various instruments. And as you can see, this is the shape that the uh, Jupiter creates in Sun's motion. Now. Interestingly, if I actually, well, I can, I can remove very center for now. If I actually look at the sun's velocity here, right here, so the speed that it um, changes by, if I, let's just make this into a separate graph. So you'll see that the velocity of the sun actually changes quite dramatically because of Jupiter. And this can be detected from other planets, other stars. And so if aliens are looking at us right now, they can see that our sun actually kind of wobbles around, and this is because of Jupiter. And this wobble can be either seen from this angle, so you can kind of see the sun is wobbling right there, or if you're looking from the side here, if you're looking from this, from, from, from this perspective, all right, so from this perspective, what you can see is a different type of a wobble. You can actually use the so-called Doppler effect to realize that sometimes when the sun is moving away from you, the light actually gets a little bit redshifted, so the color changes slightly. And when it moves toward you, it gets a little bit blue shifted. And this is because the speed here changes from like, I guess, zero meters to about 23 meters per second. And this interesting effect uh, might be visible in this game too, if I actually do the following. Okay, it's unfortunately not visible. I changed this to velocity uh, perspective where um, the color is supposed to show the speed, but because these speeds are so tiny, it doesn't really help us at all. So unfortunately, I can't really show it to you. But basically, as you can see, the speed here changes quite dramatically. Now, if I were to remove Jupiter from the picture, let's actually do that right now, and then stop the sun, basically change its velocity to zero, you would see that suddenly this doesn't doesn't wobble as much anymore. So you'll notice that 
the Sun's velocity now changed quite dramatically. It still kind of goes up and down, but nearly uh, the tenth of what it used to. And this time it's actually going up and down because of other gas giants like Saturn specifically and also Neptune and Uranus. Now let's remove those as well. Let's remove all of the major objects from the picture. So basically we're going to remove all of the gas giants and only leave terrestrial planets like Earth, Mars, uh, Venus and so on. So I'm going to close this and reopen it again and let's observe the uh, velocity that is going to be formed now. So let's do this again and start playing this and you'll see that it still does the wobble, but now we're talking about centimeters per second. Before it was like up to about 24 meters per second, now it's in centimeters per second. And interestingly, most of this wobble is actually because of Earth. So our planet Earth causes our sun to increase and decrease the speed by about 16 centimeters per second, which um, we actually could detect potentially uh, because we, we currently have technology that detects um, wobbles of about 30 -ish centimeters from um, far away stars and even more than that from nearby stars. So this is something that, you know, an alien civilization that is capable to do the same would easily be able to see. Now let's remove the terrestrial planets. Let's get rid of the planets completely and let's leave nothing but essentially asteroids and objects like uh, Ceres and Vesta. And once again, slow down the sun and expand the graph here and continue the simulation. And you'll notice that it drops dramatically. So did it store, stop wobbling? Is it impossible to detect now? Well, not really, because if I were to do this again, if I were to reopen this and go in here and open the graph one more time, you would notice that it still wobbles, but this time it's like in basically millimeters per second, um, or even less than a millimeter per second. So now the wobble is mostly due to asteroids and uh, dwarf planets like Ceres and Sedna and so on, but it's dramatically smaller than before. It's uh, for our technology currently, this would be kind of impossible to detect. But there might be an alien species somewhere out there that would be able to see this. Now, all right. The topic for this video, though, is Planet 9. Could we actually use this technology using either Doppler effect shift or the wobble of the sun to try to detect if the Planet 9 is actually out there? Well, let's do the same with just Planet 9. The uh, estimates for the distance of Planet 9 from the Sun are anywhere between 400 to maybe 1500 astronomical units. And we currently believe that it's actually, if it does exist, it's probably uh, from our own solar system. It probably did form in our own solar system and got kicked out by Jupiter and other gas giants to the outskirts. We don't think it came from the outer space because that's very, very unlikely. It's very difficult to capture planets from other stars. So let's create a new simulation actually and just place nothing but the sun. The only thing that's going to be here is the sun. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to see how much Planet 9 will cause our sun to wobble. And now there's the Planet 9. It's about 10 ma masses of Earth. If I were to place it relatively close to the sun, it would wobble quite a lot. But I'm placing it at a distance of over 400 astronomical units. Um, and let's just place it at 400 something just to give it like the best estimates. And we're going to pause the game, place the planet right here, open the sun and enable the speed and just kind of observe what happens. So we're going to do just the same thing as before. And you notice that, well, it seems that the sun started to increase speed, but in much, much smaller units. And this is actually a bit of a challenge for us. Now, here's what's happening. First of all, because Planet 9 is so, so far away, it will take thousands and thousands of years to orbit around the sun. So if I were to accelerate time here, and, and in other words, if we were to observe the solar uh, changes for like years, in that case, we might be able to detect planet nine this way. So as you can see in, after a hundred years, it becomes a little bit more obvious. It changed the speed of the sun by about, uh, I think this is about four millimeters per second, five millimeters per second. 
but this is in hundreds of years of periods. In other words, you would have to do this for many, many years, which is kind of impractical. On the other hand, it is definitely working though. As you can see, it actually affects the sun much more than the asteroids did and much more than the dwarf planets did, but not nearly as much as the terrestrial planets that are much closer to the sun. So yeah, there is an effect, there is definitely a wobble, but you would only notice it if you were to observe the sun for thousands of years. And that's kind of impractical. So if I were to change this to like, uh, let's say 10,000 years, In that case, you'll see that, yeah, there's definitely that wobble. It goes up to about uh, 10 centimeters or maybe nine centimeters per second and goes down to about zero. So if you were to find a way to do this for so, such a long time, you would be able to detect pretty much every single object in our solar system, but it's just not very practical. The much easier way, and this is actually what we're trying to do right now, is to not look at the wobbles of the sun, but instead, to look at the orbital deviations of various objects we've discovered on the outskirts of the solar system. So things like Sedna, things like uh, these objects that don't really have a name just yet, just the numerical designation. And then to try to estimate the, uh, para the orbital parameters for the object that made them move this way. Now, so far we've been pretty unsuccessful and because of this, many scientists have slowly given up on the idea of Planet Nine and currently the chance for finding it dropped to almost like 68%, I believe. Uh, but some people still have hope because there is no better explanation for why these objects move this way. Whether we find it one day or not is another question and I guess time will show, but finding it using the same techniques we use for exoplanets is not really practical. Well, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with people that enjoy watching space videos and want to learn through video games and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys later. Space out. And as always, bye bye.